is one of the Nupe towns in the southern part of Niger State. It is about 120 kilometers from Mina. The people of Kacha are predominantly farmers and fishermen. They grow rice, melon, groundnut, and sugarcane. Rivers Bako and Bakogi flow through Kacha, the rich cultivable land the people use for all year round farming and fishing. On 1st November 1930, the pioneer Anglican Church evangelist serving in Kacha, Paul Ibrahim, had a baby boy, an only child, in this small mission house. He was christened Jonathan Osman Ndagi. His mother, Comfort Jemima, was from Lokoja. According to 90-year-old Hajia Aishetu Yasura, the little son of the Anglican priest was referred to by members of the community as Uma or Papa. She said Uma grew up to be a diligent and obedient boy who was always sent on errands. Another resident in Kacha, Hajia Awawu Yasura, said the priest and his wife left indelible marks in Kacha while their young son was loved by all and sundry. Hajia Amina Yasura said as a toddler, she used to pluck fruits together at the mission house with Uma. <laughs> Another resident said the child of the Anglican evangelist was from a famous family of warriors reputed for their military exploits in Nupi land. His grandfather, Aliu Sule, was the second in command to Mayaki Kutuna, who was in charge of Reki and military intelligence in Nupi Kingdom. Sule was set to be the head of the Eitsus Calvary during the glorious movement of the headquarters from Rabat to Bidda. Jonathan Osman Ndagi looks back at his genealogy and childhood with fond memories. My earlier years of growing up was at Kacha, of course, with my parents being there. That time. Uh, later on, they were transferred to the House Christian Mission based at Usasa Zaria. They spent some time there and then we were posted out to the outstations. My father was posted to Chafi. in some forest right now, but uh, it was linked up with Kusa. For some time I stayed with my niece, Mrs. Angulo, at Lokoja. And then from, for, for about two or three years, at Kutigi. But by... 1939, I moved on to Chaffee to join my dad. Schooling for the young Jonathan started at Christ Church Anglican Primary School, now Dangaladima Primary School, Tundunwada Guso. He was enrolled by the headmaster, one Mr. Lakwene of blessed memory. Jonathan, who started school at the age of 10, lived with Mr. Lakwene from January 1940 to December 1944. Jonathan Osman Ndagi spent only five years in the primary school as he got double promotion from class two to four. After primary education, Ndagi began his teaching career as a pupil teacher at St. John's Primary School, Bidda, now named Ibrahim Taku Model Primary School. Three of the school's old structures are still standing. According to his niece, Mrs. Alice Aramatu Angulu, as a pupil teacher, Jonathan Ndagi earned seven shillings, six pence per month. When Joe was five years old, he just lived my uncle and the mother to come and meet me. I love my brother. Not because now my brother is a big man. I love my brother because I know what my brother be for me because i know say i haven't got another brother from my father no another sister from my father and i didn't know my father my father died quick i don't know my father i know i know joe's brother as my father I don't know that joe's father is not the one who born me 
then my brother came back to Bida here and started to teach in St. John's. A small amount, because our, our, in those days, small amount, as soon as possible, they give him the, the money. As soon as he take it, he just come on, put it in my hand. He won't ask it. Unless I will say, you want to buy this, you will buy this. I think I give him the money. And then by January 1947, I moved on to Sasa uh, to a teacher training college called the Malams Teacher Training College, MTs. Uh, it is in those days at Sasa. But that institution was only on for one year and, and for some reasons got closed down. It was headed then by one American lady from Ohio, Miss Moya. So after one year of training, I didn't go further with the great, great uh, three teachers training. I took on, I took up appointment at Wasasa as a primary school teacher. That college later on was restarted in summer as St. Peter's College. I can remember people who, were, who started that college at Samaru. Professor Becky, one of them. Chief Wombodo, one of them. But I, was, I did not go to join them at that stage. I remained a pupil teacher. As it was the vogue in those days, the young Jonathan combined teaching with private studies by correspondence. He did not go to secondary school but made the London GCEO level at a sitting in 1953 and proceeded to the Nigerian College of Arts, Science and Technology Zaria between 1954 and 1957 for his advanced level papers. Renowned educationist and former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Amadubello University and the University of Elore, Professor Albert Ogunshola, was his mate at the Nigerian College of Arts, Science and Technology Zaria. We never met before then, but uh, just as we met, something like magnet just brought us together. And from that time up till now, which is a span of over 50 something years, we have been together. It's uh, very difficult for some people to even understand that uh, we are not blood relations. Uh, when he was getting married, I was in Pesma. We finished together at Nigerian College, went to the University of Ibada. And from then we have, the two of us have been going in circles. If I leave one position, he will be there. If I move from one place, he will take over. And that was how we have been until we retired from service, from the university service. So, uh, Professor Ndagi has been very, very close to me and I've been very, very close to him. But the peculiar thing about him is that um, as somebody who was studying at home, who have decided to study mathematics and geography at the time we did, and to study mathematics to the level of uh, uh, doing mathematics and mathematics at uh, I mean up to degree level, one will know that he must have been a highly talented person. The only child of his parents, I'm also the only child of my parents, so you can see the similarities there as we move along. Uh, the important thing about him is that uh, he is a very straightforward person. Uh, man made of few words principled all his life he's talked to a very very simple dress and up till now if you know Professor Ndagi you know he's somebody who will say ah, it's not pompous he does he even undervalues himself if I can put it that way 
and uh, to stay with him or to run with him is to stay with a pleasant person. I have never, never seen him in angry mood. Between 1958 and 1959, Jonathan Ondagi worked as an assistant education officer at the provincial secondary school, now Government College, Bida. His students include two former heads of state, Generals Ibrahim Babangida and Abdul Salam Abubakar. Others were Generals Maman Kontagora and Gadu Nasko, as well as the Sarkin Zozo Suleja, Malam Awal Ibrahim, Ambassador James Kolo, and Mr. Daniel Kolo Gabas. In fact, his teaching made some of us to like uh, his subject. He was very good in the teaching of geography and mathematics. And those subjects happen to be my favorite subjects. So uh, I was really fond of him at the time. Secondly, he was more or less like our football coach. Most of us remembered him also in the football field where he will be directing us as to how to play football very well. Most of us will remember him in advising us that when you are close to the goal, you look down and shoot. <laughs> Professor Ndagi has attributes that most of us try to emulate simple, humble, and very caring. As a matter of fact, his ways of life had touched quite a number of us who were growing behind. In fact, I would say that in trying to emulate him, that's why some of us, even when we left secondary school, try to do private study to get our GCE A level. Very intelligent and very accommodating. In search of the proverbial golden fleece, Jonathan Ndagi attended the premier university in Nigeria, the University College Ibadan, between 1959 and 1963. Oh, very well, it was very interesting. We had to work hard. Uh, in those days, no one thought of cheating in examination. Cheating in examination just didn't cross anyone's mind. But we worked ourselves too hard that any one that could remember those days that were there. There was an ambulance always on call, 24 hours. Why? To pick up someone that had collapsed. For what, sir? From excessive mental work. Some ended up in the mental hospital at Arrow. Some of his contemporaries were the late Etsunopi Alhaji Umaru Sanda Ndayako, late chairman of Arewa Consultative Forum, Chief Sunday Awoni, late administrator of defunct East Central State, Mr. Upabi Asika, former minister of finance, Alhaji Adamu Chiroma, Professor Wale Shoinka, and erstwhile secretary to the government of the federation, and Makamanupi, Alhaji She Umusa. I have always thought of Professor Ndagi as a gentleman, personified, gentility personified. He has always been very, very conscious of uh, other people's feelings in terms of a relationship. And he would not, I, can't, I don't remember uh, ever getting angry with him or he ever getting angry with me. Uh, and this we carried out, carried on from school, from the university life. He's, he's, a, he's a gentleman, very patient person. 
extremely devoted to his religion. He's, he's, he's a, a very, very deep, uh, committed, deeply committed Christian. And uh, he relates with others, particularly Muslims, in the community uh, very, very well. For instance, today he's the chairman of um, Bida Emirate Education Forum, uh, a position which I'm a member of that. Uh, he's the chairman, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a member. He's also a member of the recently created uh, uh, Economic Social Council of Niger State. Called, of which I'm the chairman. And so we relate so easily without any problem of feeling a sense of superiority or... And I give him the due respect of his age, the age he has over me. In the, and this is the kind of, uh, uh, I believe, something that those coming behind should emulate. After his university education, Jonathan Andagi had a stint at the then Yola Provincial College between 1963 and 1964. I see come across some that I don't remember. Suddenly they'll say, hey, you are my teacher, sir, at Provincial Secondary School, Yola. Thank you. So we've gone around for so long, and then for a time I also uh, taught at a well, was principal Sokoto Teachers College. So some people went through me there too. He was principal, provincial college, now government college Funtua, between 1964 and 1968. As number four in that school's role of honor, Jonathan Ndagi is said to be the longest serving principal of the institution still alive. The 1964 set of the school, which includes the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, al Haji Aminu Masari, took this group photograph in honor of their former teacher and principal. I tried my best, you know, to get people on, on to move on in life and to give them as best as I can uh, the academic learning that they require to be able to move on to higher levels of education and to become highly skilled and well qualified people for their state. Thank you, Prof. As I said, I succeeded with some, with a few. I didn't make it. No single teacher can claim sole responsibility in the success of his students. Because the students would have gone through so many teachers. You only play a little bit for a little while on his journey to manhood. So, I don't claim full responsibility. I only claim small fractional part that I did my little bit in helping each student. Own. For those that succeeded, I'm very happy and thank God. For those that didn't, I wondered why and where I failed them. A conscientious teacher would always ask himself or herself, where and why have I failed this child? The quest for more knowledge took Jonathan Ndagi to the University of Wisconsin in the United States of America for a master's degree in educational administration from 1968 to 1969. When I was principal of so called Teachers College, that college was under uh, an American project, Northern Nigeria Teacher Education Project. And that project was contracted to the University of Wisconsin. 
So they were training uh, undergraduates and also um, graduate students. For me, as the principal, I was invited to go for a master's in education administration to help me uh, with my principalship work of that college. Hence, um, I went for my master's at the University of Wisconsin. After this, he served as the principal of the Advanced Teachers College, ATC Zaria, which is now a federal college of education for six years. Nuhu Bamali Polytechnic Zaria currently operates at the premises of the defunct Advanced Teachers College. During his tenure as principal, Jonathan Ndagi left for his alma mater for a doctorate degree, which he completed in 1975. On my completion of the master's program, I was given uh, admission to be picked up any time I wanted to come back for PhD. So that was uh, kept for me. Any time I wanted, I could like, activate that offer. And by 1973, um, the chance came up for me to be able to go back with the scholarship of uh, the then Northwestern State Government Scholarship Board. I took that advantage. I was still call up that the offer still remained open. And I took it up and went back for my PhD. Finished in 1975. In fact, I finished uh, September 75. And the graduation ceremony also takes place sometime in November or December. So I, I, I couldn't just wait around doing nothing, just waiting for graduation ceremony. Although his hobbies include photography, Professor Ondagi has no single photograph of his graduation ceremonies because he never attended any. It's no question of why. I just didn't. No reason. I mean, the reason was I didn't know it. Commencement period, for instance, I finished the system that you can finish early before what they call commencement date, the graduation date, which may be some weeks away. I just wasn't keen on staying around doing nothing. He was appointed acting director. Institute of Education, ABU Zaria, between 1978 and 1979, and became the substantive director from 1979 to 1983. Professor Joseph Sunday Aliu is the current director of the institute. If you look at uh, the history of this institute and the university and the history of education in Nigeria, one thing stands out that he can never be duplicated on that he could never be replicated in. That was his founding and co-sponsoring the inception, inauguration of uh, the first national seminar on reading in Nigeria. This transformed into what became Reading Association of Nigeria. He sponsored single-handedly this particular conference it was a national conference that had as participants professionals in reading from the United States, from different parts of West Africa, from University of Ibadan, from University of uh, Ife at that time, now Obafemeolo University, and uh, principally also from Amadubele University, Zaria. The experts were so impressed that they came up with the idea of starting uh, National Reading Association that became RAN, which is Reading Association of Nigeria. He was instrumental to the founding of that particular association. He was also instrumental in kick starting what you might call the verb, the emphasis on research as an area of academic pursuit. 
he was inimitable in giving what you might call a high accent, high emphasis to publications, to carrying out of research. Then he also ensured that when some selected colleges of education were given the permission, the right to run degree programs, he made a representation to the National Universities Commission to include ATC Zaria and Kano to be allowed to run B.Ed degree programs in the various subjects, principally in the areas of languages, in the areas of mathematics, in the areas of science. Uh, cut the whole gamut of uh, simplicity, humility, approachability, and uh, what you might call you, a dynamism that was unobtrusive, the kind of dynamism that didn't make noise, that didn't uh, uh, announce his presence. And uh, for me, he, he was somebody you could talk to without knowing you were talking to your director, without even recollecting you were talking to somebody who was a lecturer. After 13 years of meritorious service at ABU, Professor Jonathan Ndagi was made the pioneer vice chancellor of the newly established Federal University of Technology, FUT MENA, in February 1983. In those days, no one that I knew of that was appointed a vice chancellor went out of his or her way to lobby for that appointment. Who are just involved in research and teaching publications. You just got, got tapped on your shoulder. Would oh, you want to be a VC? So, well, let me think about it. <laughs> well, you know, we, I didn't love it. And for those of my generation, they never did. In fact, I say Sherlock because I was not the first person on the cards for FUT Mina. It's just that the first person refused it. Can you imagine? Refused it. I show Musa then was the secretary of the federal government. In fact, I took the letter of the rejection of Professor Musa, Musa to show Musa. But I show Musa looked and said, "We don't know. We don't see no new professors from the north. I'm sure if I ask you to go there now, you won't go." I said, "Try me." Professor Ndagi is credited with the sole foundation the university now boasts of by young and old lecturers of the institution. One of them is Elizabeth Eterigo, a second set student and now a lecturer at the Department of Chemical Engineering. So I knew him first as a vice chancellor and a father of the school. And uh, nearly everybody in the school, because the population wasn't much. We had personal relationship with him. And he took us like a farmer that has a farm, always going to his farm. So constantly he comes to the school to check our well-being, academically, you know, socially, morally. And he was always making sure that we were okay. He's a disciplined man. And he's also a disciplinarian. He disciplined himself. And he also will discipline you. Want you to be disciplined. And he's a hard working person. We had a slogan in those days when we were in school. Each time we complain about the stress, because we're going, we, we had what was called trimester. We had three times, like now they have just two semesters, you know, first and second. We had three times. So you discover that 
nearly all the months in a whole year we were in the school. I remember we had a period we went to complain. And he said something to us. He said, why you are here is to read your book. Nothing than to read. And that hard work does not kill. So his slogan then was hard work, hard work, hard work. So we knew him as hard work vice chancellor. Professor Jacob Baba, a geographer, served as Professor Ndagi's deputy. Professor Ndagi has been a mentor to me. I've said something about the first days in school, 1951. He had taught me the A, B, C, D, and one, two, three. And right from that stage, we had appreciated him as a teacher with all the skills that are needed to get children through to what they want. Um, I have also been associated with him in certain positions of responsibility. For many years, we were together in ABU. He was a very senior colleague there, and we had all looked up to him for guidance, for counseling, and we've never been disappointed because he's, left, he's lived an exemplary life. Not just to me, but to lots of my colleagues. We hold him very dear indeed. He's a very humble person. That makes him very approachable. He is a very sympathetic person. That makes him a friend to almost everybody that comes across to him. He is an administrator per excellence. Honestly, I think the way he handled resources in this institution, the way he related to all levels of staff and students was remarkably exemplary. But I've um, come to associate with him is this, that you cross the bridge when you get there. You don't start worrying about how you will cross it before getting there. Another saying I have uh, very much come to appreciate in him, as he counsels students at various uh, fora, he says, work in such a way that the sky becomes the limit. In other words, your attitude to work should be such that you take the sky as your limit. You never give up. Even when you encounter difficulties, never give up. Because there is no failure to anyone who never gives up. He keeps going on and on. A climatologist, Professor David Adifolalu, and the current registrar of the university, al Haji Mohammed Dati Usman, spoke of Professor Undagi in superlatives. His time here, when I was still under him, would be considered as the opt optimum in my life because he trained me to be self-sufficient, to come to him anytime and he could sign your check for you on the boot of a car. He was that down to earth. I can describe him as an evangelist. Why? Because evangelists never care about what coming to them but disseminating knowledge of God. He's a Christian man down to earth. He was driving himself as a vice chancellor for the time that I knew him. He will go from the office to have his lunch by 4 p.m. every day sun or shine he will be back on this campus and will not leave until 9 p.m. He picked 
rubbish from the floor, from the ground, anywhere he is, any piece of paper. That when he was here, nobody could drop any piece of paper. And his flowers at that time were just like he meant it to be a paradise for everybody. Every part of the campus was lush and green, and that was his handiwork. It is understatement to say that he was an epitome of hard work, of sincerity, of honesty, and by God, the best man I've ever worked with. And I think it is the foundation he has laid that made us to grow very fast. Because by 1990, we've already started postgraduate studies here after only four years. And by 1993, we had our first PhD. And now the university has produced more PhDs than any contemporary uh, French university of technology in the country. In geography alone, we have produced over 25 PhD graduates. So that shows you the commitment and the solid foundation it has laid. There's no department that lacked reagents in the physics, in chemistry, in biochemistry, in microbiology when it was VC. It was such a thorough man, and we believe that that thoroughness kept him younger and younger. The evidence is there for everybody to see. He has made his mark in the academia. Uh, I attended the uh, College of Education, Sokoto, then Advanced Teachers College, and you know he's affiliated to Amadou Bello University, Zaria. And uh, he signed my NCE certificate, uh, being the director then of the Institute of Education, Amadou Bello University, Zaria. Uh, all his life, Professor Ndagi spent in the academia. Ever since he has remained uh, focused on educational matters, we do go there to consult him on issues, how we can uh, make progress. So he's uh, somebody, I think, he's a reference point insofar as our education sector is concerned. And I think we owe him a lot of gratitude for what he did, especially at the Federal University of Technology, MENA. Uh, you can see that he established it on a very sound footing. Uh, it's not easy to start something and to see it endure in your lifetime. But you can see we've had uh, about three other vice chancellors after him, and they're just building on the good structures he has uh, laid uh, solidly. So we thank him for that pioneering effort. A professor of geosciences at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, USA, said as a lecturer at FUT MENA under Professor Ndagi, he was opportune to see excellence in action. Looking back, you know, um, um, I, I can say that the experience that the foundation, the foundation that Professor Ndagi laid here was a foundation um, of excellence in establishing this university is at par with any other, um, any other institution of its kind in the world. Professor Ndagi left FUT Mina at the completion of his two terms in March 1990 and was appointed an ambassador to Australia, New Zealand, Papua, New Guinea, Fiji and Vanuatu on 1st February 1991. I was offered the position because um, there weren't many northerners in the foreign service in those days. It was difficult convincing chaps from the north to go to Lagos and walk. They thought you are going uh, beyond the world somewhere. <laughs> it took a lot of coaxing to convince some people to transfer to federal service nurses. So even I was over that position by the time I was leaving University College of Bali. It was at the final clearing interview in Kaduna that I declined the offer. Why? Well, I didn't know why then. My reason was I wanted to remain in education. But looking back, I can tell you why. Please do, Prof. If I had gone to foreign service, I would never have become a professor.
And at any rate, I still ended up being an ambassador. <laughs> Normally, sometimes it's, you don't get a directive back from your headquarters on an issue. Well, being on the spot, you are expected to make certain rep a report and recommendations. You use the basis of that recommendation to speak for the head of state. You know, whomever you are representing, and this is it. You don't accept any insult for your country. It doesn't matter whether you are in the wrong. You don't, you don't allow your, con your country to be insulted. Professor Ndagi met his wife, Comfort, when she was 13 years old and a pupil in Standard 1 at St. John's Anglican Primary School, Bida, in 1946. They courted for 12 years and wedded in 1958. He was very uh, a good teacher. He was very good at teaching mathematics. And I didn't like maths when I was in school. So uh, there was this special arrangement for us that those of us who didn't like maths, they arranged that he should be coaching us. And he was coaching and I was getting it. I was able to pass it. And from there, I started developing interest for him. Very loving, very caring. Um, well, I, I don't know if I use the word possessive, <laughs> if that word is right. And he makes sure that his family is very comfortable at all costs. He is a dedicated husband. A caring and loving one too. He would rather give me that thing that I need, and then he suffered the lack of it. You know, he is, I think he's too generous to a fault. <laughs> he doesn't uh, say do or die, that kind of thing. If it is not there, okay, no problem. If we just tell you no problem, next time. And that is it. His favorite dressing is kaftan. He wears his kaftan, but he doesn't wear the same material of kaftan with the trousers. <laughs> I'm sure you must have noticed that in him. I Love did, him. but he wouldn't change. <laughs> He can forfeit his food for work. He is a workaholic. I remember one day when David Mark was the governor of this state. And I think we came from Zaria, ABU. So and he came to start the university here around. 11 or so, he called. The, the governor called and said, ah, Madam, where is your husband? I said, He is with his uh, favorite wife. So David Mark said, Favorite wife, Madam? I said, Yes. He said, Which one is this? I said, The office. In FUT, and he laughed and laughed and laughed. Thank you very much, madam. <laughs> the union is blessed with five children, one male and four females. It's Professor Ndagi is not a man of many words. Okay, his words are usually few, and but his eyes, his 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 life itself said so much. So it was more not he wasn't so much the person that would say. But for us, I think if he left 
any legacy for us as his children or if he taught us anything when we were growing up, it was through what he did, what we saw him do, who he was. He did not teach us anything. He lived what he wanted us to see and his life was what he taught us. I loved the fact that he, he didn't allow us to be pretentious. Somebody else outside, somebody else at home. If you had to have friends, whether they were girlfriends or boyfriends, I want them to be home. That was who daddy was. Anybody who you cannot bring home, I don't want to see you outside with that person. Jimmy Adegoki from Koro in Ikiti, local government area of Kwara State, is one of the sons-in-law of the Indagis. Is a sense of mission, you know, based on a... Um, a, a vision of what you want to accomplish. Okay, Professor Ndagi is a man of great accomplishment, as um, as, as as most Nigerians uh, who know him uh, can attest to. This man is a man of faith. He's a man of faith. He's a man of virtue. A lover of community service, Professor Ndagi is the chairman Bida Emerit Educational Forum, a body rehabilitating dilapidated educational institutions and providing instructional materials for them. He is also a member of the Niger State Economic and Social Council, as well as the Chairman Project Implementation Committee, Proposed Private University, Cornerstone University in Bida, Niger State. And it's part of the economic hardship. We from Bida Emirates have been able to collect 44 million naira. Can you imagine from hard pressed civil servants? And with that, we've been able to do over 40 projects. We've been able to buy uh, science equipment for Bida Government College, for Bida uh, Women's uh, Model Secondary School. We've been able to support uh, one of our own for. Uh, law school. He finished the degree but couldn't go to law school because lack of money. We supported him that way. The other passion of the 77 year old professor is music, and he is the director of the youth choir of the Cathedral Church of St. Peter's, Mina. The Anglican Bishop of Mena Diocese of the Church, Right Reverend Daniel Abubakar Yisa, said the professor is a committed Christian and a role model. In the church, he is a mobilizer. Apart from his own personal faith in God through Christ Jesus, he has this special calling of sensitizing members to join the choir and making sure that if you're a member of the choir, you perform to expectation. The other aspect he has introduced again is the children choir. These young ones in secondary schools and the universities have come up to form another choir in the cathedral and they've gone places. He's a man that when you look at him again, at his age, experience, and position in life, he should be resting in his villa. But I can assure you that at times by 10 p.m., Prof is still driving around the town. Not on sightseeing. He personally dropped these children in their parents' residences after choir practice, even at his age. It's a big surprise, but that tells us the degree of commitment he has. Not using a driver, using his own personal car and driving it himself. We know that many at his age can hardly drive, not to talk of driving in the night. Many at his age.
have no time for such things because they are big men. But when you see him, you see a bunch of humility, a bunch of compassion, a bunch of dedication to God and to humanity. He throws a lot of challenges to many within and outside the church. I just wonder how he keeps going through the activities that he has taken on, both in the society and um, spiritual matters in the church. He also spoke on his philosophy of life. One word, service. Service to God and to mankind. And more importantly, one's service to God can only be measured by one's service to mankind. You don't see God. So, no one can measure your service to God. That service to God is measured by your one's service to your fellow man. And at the end of the day, it isn't how much money that you've got. It isn't how much knowledge that you've got. It isn't how much power that you wield that is more, that is has its importance as service to your local community, your state, your country, and the world. A recipient of the National Honor of the Officer of the Order of the Niger, OON, and Honorary Doctor of Science degree from the Federal University of Technology, MENA, Professor Ndagi said he would leave posterity to judge him for all he has been able to do. I think different people will choose different things to remember me by. I leave that to their choice. As far as I'm concerned, I think I'll do my best that I can't possibly do and try to put a smile on every face that comes across me. There is no doubt that the 77 years of Professor Jonathan Ndagi's sojourn on earth have been eventful and rewarding. As a teacher, educational administrator, diplomat, and religious leader, he has left his footprint on the sands of time. <laughs>